And welcome back to Steins Gate. I'm sure we are not in store for an emotional roller coaster whatsoever, right? You know, I kind of unintentionally sandbagged the end of chapter 9. Not because I didn't think it was a really cool ending, but because I wanted to wait until now to talk about it. So obviously, the big revelation at the end of chapter 9, which I will say, I was very fortunate the first time I ever read this VN and that I didn't know it was going to happen because obviously the visual novel didn't receive an English localization until years after the anime had been made and of course the anime that's really easy to immediately subtitle put a dub out so that, like that's how Steins 8 got its like first uh, like release in the West its first you know introduction to the audience but I had never seen it so the visual novel was my introduction and thankfully I got to have that experience of how cool Chapter 9 is and the big twist here at the end. Completely blind. So that twist, obviously, is that Okabe has finally realized that in undoing all the demails that he's made over the course of the story, that it comes down to the last one, the one that actually made him arrive on the supposed Alpha World Line, the one that took place all the way back in the prologue, in which he saw Karisu killed at Rade Khan sending that D-mail by complete accident, by complete just happenstance, to Daru, caused uh, CERN to intercept it with Echelon, and that caused the entire world line to change for Divergence to send it over to the Alpha world line in which CERN eventually rules the future. Now he's trying to get way back, all the way onto the quote-unquote Beta world line, where Mayuri's not going to die, but unfortunately, Karisu does. But is he going to do that? Because now we're kind of left at a crossroads. Okabe realizes it's not that simple. That to save his best friend, the friend he's had for years, he now has to sacrifice his new friend. And will it be that simple? Now, as I said at the end of Chapter 9's video, there are a couple of different versions of Chapter 10 that exist. And they even have different names. So our first time through Chapter 10, we're going to see the uh, more canonical version of it. That is the uh, that has been caused by the choices I have made very subtly up until now. So we'll see this version and uh, we'll get an ending for the game, for the story in this video. And then in the video after this, we will get an alternate version to Chapter 10 and we'll see that ending. So let's load it up. Chapter 10, Paradox Meltdown I thought that I had found the solution, that everything would be alright. But the equation was meaningless, I had solved nothing. Instead, I am left with the terrible choice. Mayuri or Karisu. One of them must die. Radikon is still off limits. They haven't yet repaired the hole that Suzuha's time machine made. I look down through the hole at the streets of Akiba. From up here, they look narrow and stifling. Across the way, a train rumbles by. I watch the yellow striped cars move past. I came here because I wanted to be alone. The day before yesterday, I abruptly canceled the attempt to hack CERN. Karisu and Daru demanded an explanation but I just couldn't give them one. The decision has paralyzed me. Two days later, I'm still nowhere close to finding an answer. What do I do? Two weeks ago, on July 28th, Dr. Nakabachi held a press conference in this very spot. The same day, Karisu was murdered. Let's say we go through with the plan and delete the first email I sent, the one about Karisu's death from CERN's database. That would return us to the Beta World Line, where it all began. What would happen then? According to my predictions, our friend, Lab Member 004, Makase Karisu would disappear. Someone who died on July 28th cannot be alive now, on August 15th. That would defy causality. A time paradox. That world line has already rejected her existence. The moment we erase the D-mail, Karisu will cease to exist. 
And so, I am left with two options. Option 1. Hack CERN with the IBM 5100 and erase the first email I sent, thus returning to the beta world line. Carisu will disappear, but Mayuri will live. CERN will never build a time machine, and the future will be free. Option 2. Don't hack CERN. Keep living here, on the Alpha world line. Mayuri will die. So will Moeka and FB. Kurisu will likely be kidnapped by CERN, but at the very least, she won't die. With her research, CERN will gain control of space-time, and the future will be a dystopia where no one is free. <laughs> Ridiculous. I choke out a laugh. How am I, of all people, supposed to make that choice? I don't really care about the future, whether it's free or ruled by CERN. I know I should care. Suza entrusted her wish to me. Doesn't that make it my responsibility? But still, it doesn't seem quite real. 20 years is a long time. Right now, only my Yuri and Karisu matter. I must choose which to save. If I had been given this choice back on July 28th, before all this started, I probably would not have hesitated to abandon Karisu and save my Yuri. But it's not July 28th, it's August 15th. I've spent two long weeks with Karisu. She's one of us now, an integral part of the lab. And as I let through time and time again, she was the one person I relied on most. Always calm, always thoughtful, always ready with a new hypothesis, always there to give me a push when I needed it most. I wouldn't even have the time leap machine if not for Karisu. It's thanks to her that I made it this far. After all she's done for me, there's no way I can abandon her now. But nor can I let Mayuri die. Everything I've done, I did to save her. I would give anything, even my own life, to see her safe. More than anything, I want her to live. No matter what, I won't let her die. Kill Karisu or kill Mayuri. That is what this choice comes down to. I drive my fist into the wire fence. Is there no other option, no way to save them both? What if I use Suza's time machine? I could return to the beta world line, then use her time machine to travel to July 28th. No, that won't work. The reason Suza leapt to 2010 was to prevent CERN from creating a dystopia that only occurs on this world line. On the beta world line, she'll have no reason to leap to 2010. Suza's time machine won't exist, so I won't be able to use it. Alright, then what if I send Karisu a warning via D-mail? It could say, don't go to Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. No, that won't work either. Remember, causality converges. Parisu's death is inevitable on the beta world line, just as my Yuri's is inevitable on this world line. No matter what I do, fate will ensure her death. I slowly sink to the floor with my back against the fence. I'm powerless against the will of fate. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> Maybe. 
maybe Mayuri doesn't die on the current world line. I cancelled Moika's D-mail, plus I haven't had an opportunity to check the Divergence meter since. Might there be a chance? If the pattern continues, Mayuri's death has been pushed back to the night of the 17th. If Mayuri doesn't die between 7 and 8 p.m. that night, then I won't have to face this horrible decision. I know it's unlikely. I understand that from all my from all my experiences so far. But still, I can't help but cling to that hope. M Mayuri and Karisu. If I can just save them both. Then I don't care if the future is ruled by CERN. I'll betray Suzuha's dream if that's what it takes. So please, let Mayuri live. To whom should I make this desperate plea? God? Fate? The universe itself? Either way, I am just one insignificant human among billions. Will my prayers truly reach? I already know what the answer will be. And that knowledge, that certainty, is despair. Komima runs for three straight days, from the 15th to the 17th. On the last day, I go with my Yuri and stay with her from morning until Komima closes. It's not really my thing, though, and the crowd is ridiculous, so I wait off to the side with my Yuri's bags. From time to time, my Yuri appears with new bags for me to guard, and usually a snack for us to share, but most of the day, I spend alone. To some extent, I'm here to escape reality, to empty my mind and forget my fears. But even when I close my eyes, I can still hear the footsteps of death approaching. <sighs> it's already dark by the time the bus drops us back at Hakiba. Mayuri is dragging her costume case behind her. I'm carrying bags covered in Moe artwork and loaded with dojinshi. These are all Mayuri's purchases, not mine. I can't believe she bought so much. I guess the reason she doesn't cosplay herself is that she's too busy shopping. We get off the bus and just stand there for a while. Maybe Mayuri wants a taste of normalcy again, now that the chaos of Komima has ended. I can't begrudge her that. I stifle a groan and shrug my shoulders. But not so much that I'd line up early in the morning for Komima each year, like Daru and Mayuri do. To confirm your death. Those words pop into my head, but I quickly shake them away. Why am I so set on Mayuri dying? I want her to live, remember? <laughs> Suddenly, silence. A downhearted frown replaces the usual smile on Mayuri's face. Did my answer upset her? But it's not like I could tell her the truth. How do you tell someone they're going to die? I frantically try to smooth things over. Ah, 
絶対大人気になっちゃうのにねいろんなブログに画像アップされまくってね新聞社のニュースサイトにも載って海外にも紹介されちゃったりするよそしたらルカくんはワールドワイドなスーパースターなのでマユシーはそれを見て遠いところに行っちゃったなーって思いを馳せるのです本当にそうなりそうだから困るねえオカリ Suddenly Mayuri turns around and peeks at my face as she walks backwards. A smile finally returns to Mayuri's face. Ah, demo ne. Tsugi wa Okarin mo cosplay shite kurelu to motta ureshi ka mo. Ah, kangai toku. That's right. Don't think negative thoughts. Think about a fun, bright future. Eh, ii no? Honto ni? Mayuri jishin mo. コスプレして参加するならなそれだけじゃなくルカことそれとクリスティーナも呼ぼう二人にコスプレさせるよう説得しろそこまでできたなら真打ちとしてこの俺が狂気のマッドサイエンティスト法院狂魔としてコミマに降臨しようではないか The next コミマ takes place this winter We'll be there as if none of this ever happened. All of us laughing and smiling together. Just imagine a future like that. So, ka, Michi wa kewa shi ne. Demo ne, ima chotto sozo shite mi tara, totte mo tanoi sa. Sore ni Chris chan wa cosplay ni kyo mi shin shin mi tai datta shi. We arrive at the lab. I look up at the second floor, but there's no light in the window. Oddly enough, there's nobody here today. I've got a bad feeling about this. Is Moeka going to ambush us? On the previous world line, I forgave Moeka and Tenoji. But that has already been undone. This is a new world line. The rounders are still alive, and they're still after the time leap machine. Mayuri, just wait here a little bit. I motion for her to sit and wait on the bench in front. Then I carefully check the area. I know my efforts are likely futile, but still, I want to do anything I can, anything to give Mayuri a chance, however small. Of surviving on this world line. Something tells me it would be foolish to go straight up to the lab. So first I decide to check the street for any suspicious people. I walk down the street towards Kura Maibashi Dori, careful to always keep my Yuri in sight. <laughs> Suddenly a white station wagon parked at the end of the street fires its engine and takes off in our direction. <laughs> I can see clearly through the front window. The man in the driver's seat is unfamiliar. But I have seen that station wagon before. It's the same one Moika used to run us over on a previous world line. It's the same one Tenoji used to transport the IBM 5100. And now it's bearing down on me at full speed. I'm in the center of the road. There's nowhere to run. The station wagon flips on its high beams. Instantly turning my vision white. I can't move. It's all happening too fast. I expected an ambush inside the lab. Instead, I'm facing a charging car. What should I do? I'm fine. I won't die. This world line hasn't approved that fate. What do I do? No, wait. What day is it? This is the first time I've made it to the 17th. Does that mean my death is still undecided? 
Will I die in my Eerie's place? If that will save her, if that will end this, then maybe it's for the best. No, I don't want to die yet. Two contradictory emotions collide in my mind. My body doesn't know which way to turn. Will I be the one to die? Something slams into my back. I open my eyes. I'm lying on the side of the road. My whole body hurts, but I don't appear to be seriously injured. Someone saved me? I look up to see the station wagon's taillights disappearing around the corner. And there, lying in the center of the road, is my Yuri. I run to her side. My ear is bleeding from the head. The pavement is slick with blood. Did she... protect me? But that's not what I wanted. I lift her body up in my arms. Her eyes twitch and then slowly open. Oh, Cuddy. I love you, dear. Go back. What I said. Her hand wanders, as if seeking something. It reaches for the starry sky. Her eyelids are heavy. They could close any second now. But still, she looks straight into my eyes. And for some reason, she smiles. Stardust handshake. Her delicate fingers grasp at the sky, but all they find is empty air. Her arm goes limp. I grab her hand before it hits the ground. My Yuri is no longer breathing. I've seen her die countless times, but this time it's too much. This time it's all my fault. I embrace my Yuri's tattered body. Her lifeless, motionless, tattered body. I quench my jaw and bite back my tears. Why did she have to die like this? What possible meaning could this death have? Yes, it happened because fate demanded it. Yes, her death is unavoidable, the result upon which this world line converges. I knew from the beginning that this would happen, but I never imagined that she would die saving me and with a smile on her face. There is no future for Mayuri on this world line. And that brings me once again to the choice. Do I return to the beta world line, killing Kurisu? Or do I leave things as they are and accept Mayuri's death? I can't run away. I am the one who twisted fate. I am the one who must decide. The sky is blue. I'm on the roof of Radikan after going back 56 hours with two time leaps. I lean against the wire fence and stretch out my legs as I look at the sky. I want more time to think, that's why I came back. Last time, I spent two days refusing to face reality. But that is no longer an option now that I've confirmed my eerie's death. This time, I need to reach a decision. But how? The equation has no solution. No matter what choice I make, someone dies. From a purely utilitarian viewpoint, I should choose the Beta Worldline, where CERN never creates a dystopia. 
But it's not that simple. Not for me. There must be some other way. According to Suzuha, 2010 is a point of great divergence at the attractor field level. I think that divergence had already commenced by the time I sent the email reporting Karisu's death. So when did divergence begin? I can't say for sure, but I think it was the moment we completed the phone wave named subject to change. That was around the middle of July. Daru and I deemed it a failure right after completion. By the time Karisu was killed, there was already a huge divergence at the attractor field level. Now that I think about it, reading Steiner activated that day when I sent the email that started it all. At that moment, every pedestrian and vehicle on the main street of Akiba suddenly vanished. That feels so long ago. But now, I can finally explain it. That was the moment I moved to the Alpha World Line. On the Beta World Line, where this all began, Suzuha didn't arrive in her time machine. Dr. Nakabachi's conference went ahead as planned, and the flow of tourists and shoppers through Akiba was unimpeded. But when I sent the email, events changed on a huge scale, from my perspective at least. On the current world line, Suza crashed her time machine into the roof of Radikan. Nakabachi's presentation was cancelled, and this part of Akiba was closed to traffic. Because I was out on the street when the world line changed, it appeared to me as if thousands of people suddenly vanished. The truth is that they were never there to begin with. Like a magician's trick, it's so obvious once you understand how it works. The real problem is the timing of the D-mail. I moved to the Alpha World Line after Karisu died. If I had sent the D-mail before she died, then I might have been able to intervene even now on this World Line. But no, that would defy causality. I sent that D-mail because I saw Karisu's body. That's the way it has to be. Who killed her anyway? I still don't know. It definitely wasn't suicide. What if I identify the murderer and send them a D-mail warning them off? Would that prevent her death? I mean, no one has tried to kill her on this world line, have they? Maybe there's a chance. However, to send that D-mail, I would first have to move to the beta world line. The more I think about it, the more futile it seems. I've already seen my eerie die countless times. Everything I tried to prevent it failed. I understand all too well. When fate wants someone dead, nothing can stop it. I can't save Karisu. I thought I was alone, but it seems that I was wrong. I turn around to see Karisu standing in the open door. I avert my eyes. I can't look her in the face. Not now. こんなところで何してる。いや。よくここが分かったな。一人になりたいって言ってたから確率的に見てここに一番いそうっていう会を導き出した。だったら一人にさせてくれ。わざわざ探さなくていい。俺は迷子の子供じゃない。Right after she gets herself flustered, Karisu sighs and puts on a serious expression. まあ、<笑> Fragu 
いつもの独善的な態度はどこ行ったのよ狂気のマッドサイエンティスト法王院京馬のくせに独善的でなんかいられるかあ今回ばかりは独善的じゃいられないんだ I have forced my ego on others before Suzuha, Ferris, Lukako I sacrificed their dreams for the sake of my goal I justified it by telling myself that it was necessary to save my Yuri. I weighed their suffering against the alternative and made my self righteous choice. But this time, the alternatives are impossible to compare. <laughs> どういう意味なあクリスティーナ俺は所詮ただの学生なんだよ狂気のマッドサイエンティスト法院京馬そんなの全部妄想だ設定だ気づかなかっただろいや初対面時点でなんとなく気づいてましたが初対面か What if I hadn't found Carice's body back then? Let's try imagining that situation. If I hadn't seen Carice dead, I wouldn't have interrogated her before the seminar at ATF. Without hearing me call her a zombie, she wouldn't have taken an interest in me. She wouldn't have come to the lab. Ultimately, we would never have built the time leap machine, leaving me without the means to save my Yuri. And of course, Karisu would not have become a fr our friend. We would not be as close as we are right now. I can't meet her questioning gaze. That's not what this is about. Karisu's voice cracks a little. オレは説明したよな。セルンにクラッキングをすることで迷いが死ぬことのないベータ世界線へたどり着けると。2036年のセルンのディストピアもなくなる自由な未来が待ってるバラ色の世界線。そんな風に聞こえた。バラ色なもの
Her soft chestnut hair blows in the wind. She lifts a hand to hold it down. あれって全部状態だ。天音さんの受け売りでしょ。2036年時点ではスタンダードらしいけど。その時代の研究者たちは一体どうやってそれが正しいって証明したの。理論が間違っているという態度か。だが確かに収束は存在する。俺はそれを
ここに存在していることからもわかるすでにこの世界線は私が死なない世界線なわけだからあんたの主観がベータ世界線に行ってしまっても私の主観はここにとどまることだってできるのかもしれない精神はどこにあるかって話そして私は私の精神をあんたの好きにさせたくない科学者とは思えないほどのファンタジーな理論だでも可能性はゼロじゃないだからあんたは何も心配する必要はないクリスマイルス。How can she smile? I just told her that she's going to die. 私を見殺しにできないって言って悩んでるのよね。でも今の私の仮説で言えば私は別の可能性世界線で生き続けていける。だからそもそも岡部は悩む必要なんてない。<笑>仮説は仮説だ。アトラクタフィールド理論だって仮説まだ誰にも何も証明されてないから2036年時点では証明されていたとしてもその証明を今の私たちは確認できないからそう考えれば未来の可能性は無限よクリスは彼女の目を戻しました後に終わった。A daring armchair theory that could, quite possibly, render meaningless everything I've done up to now. How can Kurisu stay so calm? She's just an 18 year old girl. Chinamini, Shinpai Nanka Stekure Naktemo Ikara. Hokabe ni son nakoto saretara. Kekko Pride Kizuk. Son na ikata. Moshi Moshi. マユリカディスプレイドオンのスクリーンはマユリスフェイス。ディヴォイドオブイツユーシュアルブライトネスフォーサムリーズン。どうしたあのね、ダル君から聞いたんだ。オカリンがなんだか変だったって。マユシーはコミマに夢中になってて、オカリンのことよく見ててあげられなかったね。いつもならオカリンが元気なかったらすぐに気づくのにごめんね Don't apologize You've done nothing wrong でね何かあったの<笑>オカリン I can't tell her I can't I kept it a secret from her all this time That's the way it has to be. Nani mo. Nai yo. Sokka. Ano ne. Mae wa yoku. Mayushi ni iron na hanashi shite kureta yo ne. Tatoeba. Eto. Kikan ni wa. Kanbu ga yo ni ite. Sore zore. Geppu to sudachi to. 声優とジャコだっけ玄武とスザクと清流と白子だそうさそれそういうねオカリンのお話とっても面白かったなでもねえオカリンあのねマユシーのこと重荷に,に感じてたら言ってねそ,そんなことえへへじゃあとりあえず切るねもしマユシーにいろいろお話ししたいなーって思ったらいつでも電話してくれていいからねじゃあトゥットゥルー She hung up on me マユリーなんだってあいつ何が重荷だよ勝手に自分を責めやがって
ふざけるなよくそいつもは空気を読めないくせになんでこういう時だけ主にね俺は一度だってマユリを重荷に感じたことはないだったらそれをはっきり言ってあげればいい Maybe it wasn't a good idea to leave Mayuri in the dark. She never looks like she's thinking anything, and yet, she saw my doubt. Either way, I can't tell her the truth. Okabe. Kurisu sighs, then glares at me. Kore made no anta nara, nayandari shina katta hazu. Tori aizu, Mayuri ni ai ni iku beki. Ano ko datte. She's right. Even if I don't tell Mayuri the truth, I need to at least tell her something. I'll postpone my decision and go see Mayuri. It's afternoon on the first day of Komima, and the crowds are finally beginning to thin out. Of course, the industry booths and cosplay area are still packed. But at least I don't have to wait in line to get in. I've been trying to get in touch with my Yuri for a while now, but she hasn't responded. I checked with Daru, but he hasn't seen her today either. Cosplay ends at 4 pm. I focus on searching the cosplay area until then, but I still can't find her. Maybe she finished early and went home. I try calling her home, no luck. They haven't seen her since she left this morning. Where is she? I'm always afraid that she'll disappear the second I take my eyes off of her. It's been like that ever since she lost her grandmother. Maybe it's just my imagination. We've been so close for so long, I saw my e r i e at her weakest and most vulnerable. Maybe that has made me overprotective. But I don't care how people see us. I just can't leave my e r i e alone. I step into the cemetery, the final resting place of my e r i e s beloved grandmother. When was the last time I came here? For about a year after my e r i e became my hostage, I'd periodically accompany her here. But I don't think I've been here since I entered high school, so it's been about three or four years. As I get closer to my e r i e s grandmother's grave, I begin to hear a voice. It's Mayuri. I'd recognize her voice anywhere. It sounds like she's talking to someone. I approach quietly. <laughs> Mayuri is standing there, talking to the grave. What a relief. She hasn't disappeared. I decide to watch silently from a short distance away. For a second, I wonder if she's learned to commune with the dead, but no, she's just talking to herself. What? Don't tell me. Does she remember her deaths? All of them? Is she inheriting memories like I do? でね、その夢の最後はいつも決まってるの。マユシーが泣いてるとね、オカリンが助けに来てくれるんだ。マユシーはオカリンにありがとう、ありがとうって言うんだけど、その声もオカリンには聞こえてなくて。
泣いちゃいそうだけど絶対に泣かなくてねでも一生懸命我慢してるのがわかるの Come to think of it Both Ferris and Lukaku remembered their memories from before the past changed. I used to think that memories couldn't be shared between world lines. I used to think that I was the exception with reading Steiner. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe everyone has the same power, and the only difference is how strong it is. Maybe reading Steiner is nothing special after all. <laughs> ごめんねごめんねって言うけどやっぱり声は届かなくてそこでいつも目が覚めるんだどうしてこんな夢見るのかな I failed so many times to save her I've watched her die again and again Everything I've done has been to prevent that from happening. And yet, have the memories of those deaths been tormenting her as she sleeps? I bite my lip in frustration. I still have a terrible decision to make. Do I save my Yuri, or do I save Karisu? There's no perfect ending here. I can't save them both. It's one or the other. If I choose Karisu, Then Mayuri's dreams will become reality. I don't want Mayuri to feel any pain. Until now, I've thought only of saving her. That is my goal. But at the same time, I can't let Karisu die. Again, my thoughts hit the same dead end. Mayuri hasn't noticed me yet. She's still staring at the sky, just as she was on the day I took her hostage. She's talking to her grandmother in heaven. あのね、最近ラボメンがすごく増えたんだよクリスちゃんでしょモエカさんルカくんフェリスちゃんそれともう引っ越しちゃっていないけどすずさん8人だよすごいね On this world line they all became lab mems however Not a single one of them has sent a D-mail. Is that how she sees it? Well, she's not wrong. She really does know me, doesn't she? そんなオカリンを見てるとね、マユシーも嬉しくなって、ニコニコできるの。それにね、賑やかだとウキウキしてくるし、特にクリスちゃんはね、アメリカの有名な本に論文が載ったりして、とっても頭がいいんだよ。
二人でぼんやり過ごして一緒に電車でお家に帰るのその2時間はね会話なんてほとんどなくてでも嫌な沈黙とかじゃなくてただそこにいるっていう感じで二人で並んでソファーに座ってオカリンはラボの作戦計画書みたいなのを書いててマユシーは漫画読んだりゲームしたりしてたまに思い出したようにね一緒にお菓子を食べてたとてもゆっくり優しく時間が流れててそれでもいいかなーなんて思ったりまるでマユシーは本当に人質になっちゃったみたいだなーとかふと思って一人でえへへーって笑ったりオカリンはニコニコしてるマユシーを見てねこういうの。I remember. It was four months ago, still spring. The lab wasn't as lively as it is now. It was an isolated bubble of slow moving time. It was nothing, just meaningless chatter to pass the time. So, I was a little bit of 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 a l i t t e Finally, she stops looking up at the sky and bows her head instead. <laughs> It's true. I haven't had time to talk to her lately. But that's because I've been fighting to prevent her death. To keep her dreams from coming true. Also, that Mayuri will keep smiling. I never again want to see her cry like she did on the day her grandmother died. That word again, burden. I've never thought of her as a burden. いつもいつもオカリンに迷惑かけてばっかりだからねえおばあちゃんマユリ lifts her face once more いつまでもこのままじゃいられないよねこのままでいいあ When I finally speak to Mayuri she turns my way with a surprised expression Her face is so soft, so innocent. Slowly, her lips curve into a smile. Ocarinda! Ah, so good! How did you know where you are? I don't know where you are. 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 でもね
あんまり無理したらダメだよマユシーはねちょっぴり心配なのですお前に心配されるほどこの法王院キョマはヤワではないのだマユリ話せる時が来たらすべて話すこえだからそれまでお前は何も変わらずにいてくれマユリ stands up and turns to the grave once more As an offering, she leaves a brand new white lily, as well as some dongo dumplings. Okari, Kaido? Kaido, my name. Dango, t a b i r u n d a r Back when we used to visit the cemetery together, it was part of our daily routine to eat dongo on the way back. <laughs> Mochiron, Dio. Chapter Four. Dongo Dumplings. Akaba is empty again today. The Otaku have all made the exodus to Komima for the second day of battle. But come nightfall, they will return to Akaba like victorious army laden with spoils, and the streets will be chaos. I know Daru has gone to Komima. The question is, has Mayuri? I hope she has. I want things to be normal again. I remember what I heard yesterday. The feelings Mayuri expressed at her grandmother's grave. The events of the last few weeks have affected her as well. After I escorted Mayuri home from the cemetery, I spent the whole night racking my brain for a third option, a way out of this mess. My thoughts were a jumble, ideas coming and going too fast to judge which were right and which were wrong. But of course, there isn't a right choice here. For in the end, it always comes back to the same question Who do I let die? And no matter how I try to dance around it, the answer is always the same. I can't choose. Is there no one else who can make the decision? No. Even if there were, I know I'd never accept their choice, whichever it happened to be. Once again, I'm heading for the roof of Rade Khan. I had to get out of the lab. My Yuri or Kurisu might return at any moment, and I can't face them now. I look up at the sky. The clouds are dark and heavy. It could start raining any minute now. <gasps> I thought that I was alone, but someone was here before me. Kurisu was lying in the middle of the roof, arms and legs spread as if making a snow angel. The image of Kurisu in a pool of blood flashes through my mind. Is she alright? I run towards her, but before I make it halfway, she suddenly sits up and turns to face me. <sighs> What a dumb thing to say. Fortunately, it looks like Harisu didn't hear me. She's busy combing her disheveled hair with her fingers. I breathe a silent sigh of relief. <laughs> Was she thinking about her death? <laughs> I don't know what to say, so I keep my mouth shut. Harisu appears to be in the same boat. She's staring at the capsule toy dispenser in the corner. Her face wearing the usual frown. The awkward silence drags on. When you think about it, Karisu's fate rests in my hands. My decision will determine whether she lives or dies. Her fantastic hypothesis yesterday was a desperate attempt to construct a scenario where she doesn't die. Even if she believes that her theory is correct, it must be difficult for her to avoid imagining her own death. I force a smile. I'm getting really uncomfortable here. Damn. I was expecting a sarcastic remark like, since when do mad scientists have manners or something? Just then, something cold lands on the tip of my nose. When I look up, raindrops start landing on my forehead. An evening shower. It's only going to get more intense, and quickly. 
Karisu hasn't moved a muscle. She's just standing there, with her arms folded, staring at the ground as if she doesn't notice the rain at all. Oi! She's acting strange, like her mind is elsewhere. I knew it. She's been thinking about... In less than a minute, the rain turns into a full downpour. We had no time to seek shelter. Karisu's scream is drowned out by the roar of the rain. <sighs> now safely inside the building, we take a moment to catch our breath. It's been a week since Suzuha's time machine disappeared, but Radicon is still closed. The lights are off and it's pretty dark inside. <laughs> おかげで下着まで in the dim light I can tell that Karisu is scrambling to cover her chest. あんたも変態だってこと。忘れてた。自分から下着まで美少年だと申告しておいてよく言う。これ以上口聞かないで。下着の色とかよくも妄想したな。許さないから。妄想などしてない。She's too self-conscious. But the color of her underwear, huh? Hmm, got to be white. だから脱いで乾かせって。ふざけないで。変態の手に引っかかるもんか。誰もそんなこと言ってないだろう。少し落ち着け。ま、たとえ服を脱いだとしても、この暗さだから案ずることはない。お前の貧相なヌード姿は
It seems like forever since I've talked to Karisu as Hoin Kiyoma. Hi, hi. Karisu suddenly holds out her hand. I hand over my coat as asked. There's an index for that? First I've heard of it. Harisu skillfully threads the needle, despite the darkness.濡れてるから針が通りにくいな。本当に偶然持っていたのか。しつこい。そんなに私がソーイングセット持ってたら悪いの？悪いとは言っていないが、まるで狙ったかのようだったからな。つまり、あんたが服を破ってしまうのを見
Where did that come from? Karisu keeps staring into the darkness. ただの錯覚かもしれないけど別にあんたを助けたいって思ったわけじゃないからな。私はあくまで前よりを助けたいだけであって。とにかく私にはなぜかそんな錯覚が記憶のように残ってる。So Karisu's the same. She still has faint memories from previous world lines. 自己分析してみたけど。夢で見たものを現実と思い込んでるのか、単なる願望か、それぐらいの結論しか出なかった。ただ、これだけははっきりしてる。あんたは、マユリを助けるべきなのよ。怖くないのか。To save Mayuri, I must undo the current world line. If I do that, Karisu will die. <laughs> Karisu suddenly changes the subject. She looks around the dark, empty stairwell. もしあんたがベータ世界線に行ったとする。みんなも一斉にそっちに移動するとしたら私だけは移動できない。私だけが取り残される。そうしたら世界中がこの場所みたいになっちゃうのかな。所詮 I need to say it. Karisu cuts me off sharply, then buries her face in her knees.怖いに決まってるでしょ。自分が消えるかもしれない。自分だけが取り残されるかもしれない。あるいはあんただけがこの世界線からいなくなるかもしれない。誰もあんたがいなくなったことを認識してない世界がずっと続いていて、私は何事
She was struggling to cope with the knowledge that her very existence was in jeopardy. She was fighting that fear all alone, and now it has finally come to the surface. Of course she's afraid. However brilliant she may be, she's still just an 18-year-old girl. Karisu abruptly stands up. I realize that I no longer hear the sound of rain pounding on the roof. I hear the pain in her voice, and also the resolve. Kurisu has made up her mind. I look away and clench my fists. My nails dig into the palms of my hands. So できるはずがないだろう。できるかできないかじゃない。あんたをやらなくちゃいけない。それしか道はない。ダメだ。お前は俺たちを大切な仲間だ。俺はお前も見捨てない。岡部。Kurisu drops to her knees and grabs me by the collar. I gasp for breath as she stares into my eyes. Her eyes are hard and stern. It's always like this when she scolds me. Always the same glare. This can't be happening. I hate this choice with no right answer. I hate the universe for being so cruel. And most of all, I hate myself for forcing Dekarisu to speak these words when she is the one with the most to lose. Tears well up in my eyes, but I bite my lip and hold them back. Is there really no other way? I can't bear it. I look straight back at Karisu as she holds me by the collar <gasps> and tightly embrace her slender body. Her clothes are still wet from the rain, but all I feel is warmth radiating from the core of her being. <laughs> Tension drains from her back and her hands. She gives her whole body to my embrace. Despite her fear, Karisu has made her choice. It's time for me to do the same. I need to decide here and now. The future of the world. Which friend to let die. Holding Karisu tightly, I whisper into her ear. Karisu suddenly pushes me away. She steps back, her face is hidden behind her hair. But her fists are trembling. Her body exudes raw fury. お前私は大丈夫だって言ってんのに何が諦めないだバカなの死ぬの英雄気取りかこの中二病患者が敵もしないくせにカッコつけてんじゃないあんたの頭の悪さにはイライラするなんで私の言うことを素直に聞き入れ
。あんたが真由里を助けることが相対的に判断してベストなのよ。一体何が気に入らないの相対的判断などクソくらいだ !Krisu stares at me in shock. 俺は神じゃない。気がついたら。それに等しい立場にいたけど全然違う誰を助けて誰を見殺しにするかなんて俺はもう決められないスズハフェリスルカコ I sacrificed their happiness to save my Yuri And the whole time, a voice in the back of my head was asking, Is this really okay? What gives me the right? This time, I want to save both of them without sacrificing anyone. <laughs> Karisu turns away with a frown, then starts tapping her foot in a clear gesture of displeasure. いつもあんた言ってるでしょシュタインズゲートの選択ってやつ。回避不能、回は出てる。岡部一人がどれだけ頑張ったって、世界の維新には勝てない。それでも、俺はもがいてやる。I won't lose my e r i or k a r i s u <笑> I hear k a r i s u grinding her teeth. Then she turns back to me. 私は手伝わないからなもうアメリカに帰るつもりだしさよならもう二度と会うこともないわね法王院京馬さん<笑>本当にバカだバカにも程があるこのバカ<笑>クリスウ disappears down the stairs Muttering insults until I can no longer hear her. Now alone, I sigh into the darkness. Karisu is absolutely right. I can't think of a single way to save them both. I'm a fool. And yet, I have to try. But this time, I won't have Karisu's help. I have to fight the universe alone. How do I save both Karisu and Mayuri? I can't use D mail. Too much could go wrong. I don't want to make the same mistakes again. In the end, all I can do is time leap. Time leaping can't save my Yuri, but at least it can delay her death, give me time to find a solution. On this world line, my Yuri dies at half past seven on the night of August 17th. That's about 26 hours from now. My battle has no end in sight. If only Suzuha was here, I could have asked her for advice. But even alone, I must find a way. So resolved, I start time weeping again to save Mayuri. I've done this before, when Mayuri died the first time at Moika's hands, I tried time weeping to prevent her death. But I only tried running away that time. This time, I try every approach I can think of. I try hiring bodyguards to protect Mayuri. I tried taking Mayuri to South America. An entire world away from Japan. I try crippling CERN with attacks on their servers, the ones that don't need the IBM 5100. I try getting my Yuri admitted to a hospital. It's hard given my Yuri's perfect health, but I manage. My goal is to keep her from dying by heart attack. I try everything I can possibly imagine. However, every plan fails. My Yuri dies again and again and again. Sometimes it's murder, sometimes an accident. But every time I leap, my Yuri dies. Maybe, it's re- maybe it really is impossible to resist fate. As long as I remain on this world line, my Yuri can't be saved. Fate will kill her every time. From my Yuri's perspective, she only dies once. But I have seen her die dozens of times, all because of me. And yet, it no longer affects me as it used to. Little by little, I have grown desensitized to her death. In the beginning, I felt unbearable pain every time I saw her die, and murderous rage towards the ones responsible. 
Now I feel nothing. The realization stuns me. After dozens of leaps, I finally realize what should have been obvious from the beginning. I never leap back more than 26 hours. Why? I could go back as far as August 11th, one whole week in the past. Yet I never do. Why? Because I know that even if I do, nothing will change. I don't believe that anything will change. Every time my Eerie dies, I find myself thinking, another failure, what went wrong this time? I calmly analyze my Eerie's death, then take my data and head for the time leap machine with a sigh, like a gamer forced for the umpteenth time to restart a particularly difficult stage. I'm just going through the motions. I didn't even realize until this moment how routine it had all become. Now that I have, my actions suddenly seem meaningless. I can't take another step. And that's how I find myself here, sitting motionless in front of the time leap machine. I've been staring at it for hours. When we got caught in that evening shower on the Rydicon rooftop, my clothes got soaked, but now they're completely dry. My body temperature has dropped, but I don't have the energy to warm myself with the shower. I sluggishly get to my feet and pick up the headset. The sight of it fills me with resignation. Resignation, that's all. There's no desperate drive to save my Yuri, no hope that this time I might succeed. Those emotions are long gone. In truth, they have been gone since my argument with Karisu. Deep down, I always knew that she was right. I pretended not to see it. I told myself that the time leap machine could solve everything. But that was just an excuse, a last attempt to satisfy my ego. In the end, all I'm doing is... I turn around in surprise, and there I see Karisu standing in the doorway. I thought she never wanted to see me again. Why is she here? Nande. Karisu ignores my question and fixes me with her usual glare. Time leap is You don't have to tell me. I already know. I know it all too well. In the end, all I'm doing is running away, running from responsibility, running from the decision. If I had known I would have to make this choice, then I would have refused Suzuha when she entrusted me with her mission. しかもそのことで感じる罪の意識もだんだん鈍っていくんだ人としての元々な感覚が失われていくんだだったらなんで今あんたは迷ってるタイムリープマシンっていう保険が効かないから俺はこのマシンを使いこなしてなんていなくて振り回されているだけなのかも。逃げたって苦しくなるだけ。She suddenly looks away. Then she leans against the wall and smiles bitterly. 私がそうだから。Is Karisu running too? From what?今の岡部見てられない。自分の顔鏡で見た。急に老けたように見える。心がボロボロになってるんじゃない。そこまで思い悩まずに私の言うことを素直に受け入れればいいんだ。さっき言った通り、あんたはここにとどまっちゃいけ
And if I go to the beta world line, Karisu will die. We'll never be able to talk like this again. It's only been 20 days since we met, and yet... Memories of Karisu flash before my eyes. ちょっと勝手に殺さないでくれますか私ピンピンしてますんで例えば実際に皆さんが体ごと過去や未来へ行くことができるようなタイムマシンを作るにはまず何が必要か考えてみましょう誰がクリスティーナだ一言も言っと
Her voice is barely a whisper. それ。それ。それは、えっと、証明、証明が必要。それがないと私は法定式を用意できない。Kurisu is getting flustered for some reason. の分泌過剰になりガンマ派から確立共鳴が起きてヒルベルト曲線のハウストルフ事件は無限大と仮定されるわけだからつまり全金線はポジトロン断層法で計測した I speak her name. Our eyes meet. Oreba. Omae ga suki da. Kurisu looks away. Her face is bright red. Omae wa. Eh? Ta. Imasu to? Omae wa. Ore no koto. Sono. Do omotte ru? <laughs> Karisu suddenly looks me straight in the eye. Her face is still red, but her expression is firm. She walks straight up to me, grabs me by the collar, and jerks me towards her. <laughs> Did I make her mad? Perhaps Kurisu hates me for some reason. Maybe she really did mean all those insults she said to me. That would be really sad. I slowly lick my trembling lips and timidly try to ask a question. I do as I'm told, though I still don't know why she's so angry. My collar is still in Karisu's grip. <laughs> Abruptly, I feel a soft sensation against my lips. The faint scent of citrus tickles my nose. When I open my eyes in surprise, I see Karisu's face scant millimeters away. And then I understand what has happened. She's kissing me. Her lips are very warm. My mind goes blank. I'm unable to think. I want to stay like this forever. But soon our lips separate. <laughs> Karisu looks down shyly. のことを忘れないでって。より強烈な感情とともに海馬に記名された。エピソード記憶は忘却されにくいのよ。そう、それに岡部は変態童貞だからファーストキスのことについて正直リハーサルが行われるはずで、それはすぐに長期記憶になって
I remember playfully kissing my Yuri in elementary school. And just a little while ago, I forcibly kissed Moika to silence her. But that was on another world line, and now it never happened, so I guess it doesn't count? So, I'm lying, of course. I've never felt such an intense kiss as that. The shock was like a lightning bolt to the brain. But still, I'm lying. Because if I miss this opportunity, I'll never be able to touch Kurisu again. This is my last chance. Kurisu fidgets. She usually glares at me harshly, but now she's avoiding my eyes. I decide to take the initiative. I wrap my arm gently around Kurisu's waist and pull her slender body against mine. Kurisu looks up at me shyly. What is she worried I'll do? I run my fingers softly through her hair. Then I slowly bend down. We're both shy, so we end up pecking at each other's lips like two small birds. Then we draw back and look at each other. Kurisu's eyes are wet. Tears are running down her cheeks. I kiss them away. They're salty. We press our lips together again. Stronger than the first time. Longer than the first time. I never want to let go. We embrace each other tightly. Our feelings too powerful to contain. We seek each other's warmth again and again. Locked in our embrace, we feel each other's breath. We feel each other's scent. We feel each other's taste. Kurisu's whisper resonates through our embrace. ね、how does Kurisu feel about me? In the end, she never really answered my question. Early morning, Akihabara Station. Kurisu is standing before the entrance with her huge suitcase beside her. She waves to me shyly as I approach. Then she blushes and shoots me her usual glare. After that kiss, Kurisu went back to her hotel to pack. That suitcase must hold everything that she brought to Japan. She's going back to America. So <laughs> Kurisu looks like she's about to cry. I'm sure I look just as sad. But I won't cry. I don't have that right. I hand her future gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. 
It's a bamboo helicopter equipped with a CCD camera, which allows it to record video in the air. A truly groundbreaking invention. But sadly, due to its constant high-speed rotation, the video it produces tends to cause motion sickness. <laughs> I wanted to give her future gadget number 7, Ghost in the Ball, but it was too big. Kurisu accepts Bamboo Helicam with a strained smile. And then, silence. No words of farewell. We just look at each other. Aomori. Kurisu spreads her arms wide. Without a moment's hesitation, I step forward and embrace the girl genius one last time. Kurisu smiles faintly, then turns and walks toward the entrance with suitcase in hand. I watch her go, unable to move a muscle. I want to stop her. I want to wrap my arms around her and tell her to stay with me forever. But I can't. This is what we decided. To save Mayuri. To save the future. I'm sorry, Karisu. I can't save you. Karisu will disappear. She'll be left behind on this world line. There is no place for her in the coming world. <laughs> I don't know whether Karisu hears my words. She keeps walking. Stride steady. Back straight. Long, silky hair fluttering in the wind. She's quickly fading into the distance. But I can tell. I can see her shoulders trembling. We will never meet again. Our world lines will never cross again. I'm glad I met you, Kurisu. I would have been lost without you. I love you. Goodbye. I stand there in the entrance as commuters file past, until long after she has vanished from sight, afraid that any motion, any thought, might cause the tears to fall. Mayuri and Daru turned to me and nod. Today is the last day of Komima. Daru wanted to attend, of course, but a little begging convinced him to prioritize the operation. I take a look around the lab. These 20 days have been madness. It's incredible to think that at one point, this lab had a whole eight members. And now we're back to three. The memories we made, the experiences we shared. To save Mayuri, I will undo them all. There is sorrow in me and guilt. I engrave them deep inside my heart. I'll never forget, I mustn't forget, these long yet short summer days. But still, I choose to erase our memories. I choose to return everything back to normal. Suzuha's mission is irrelevant. I'm not doing this for the future. As long as my Yuri lives, nothing else matters. <laughs> Daru starts typing on the IBM 5100. It's already connected to his main computer. This will get us into CERN's central database, where they keep the data they mine with Echelon. There we will locate the first email I sent on July 28th and erase all traces of its existence. With this, I can reach the Beta World Line. At last, my Yuri will be safe. I look at my Yuri. She's on the couch, sitting straight as a ramrod, with her grandmother's pocket watch pressed to her ear. She stays still, her eyes closed. Whenever my Yuri wants to calm down, she listens to the sound of that pocket watch. Earlier, I told my Yuri everything. I guess she's come to terms with it in her own way. The actual work I've left to Daru, no problem there. 
While waiting for him to finish, I walk into the development room. In the center of the room is the time leap machine. I squat down and gently brush my fingers against the microwave surface. It's cool to the touch. I've made irreplaceable friends because of this thing. And because of this thing, I've hurt them. But I don't want to blame the tool. It's how you use the tool that matters. And I've got to admit, it saved me more than once. But still. Once this is over, I'll destroy the time leap machine. We must never make the same mistakes again. Daru points to a string of characters. My name is there, followed by the message I wrote about Karisu's death. Three lines total, each 12 characters long. This data led CERN to our doorstep. At FB's instruction, Moika and the Rounders attacked. If Suzuha is right, then by erasing this data, we will escape from the attractor at Field Alpha, where CERN dominates the future. This will take us to attractor field Beta, to the Beta world line within its range of convergence, to a future without Mayuri's death. Mayuri is standing next to me, gazing intently at the monitor. She grasps my hand firmly. She looks anxious, so I pat her head to calm her down. Daru stands up and gestures to the open seat. I sit down and face the keyboard. This time, this time it ends. Karisu's face floats through my mind. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Goodbye, Karisu. Slowly, I raise my right hand and extend my index finger. Daru twitches at my cry. One press of this key, and Karisu will die. I firmly grip my coat at the shoulder, where it has been stitched together with jagged pink thread. I wish for Mayuri to live and Karisu to die. That is the truth, and I must never forget it. This is the choice of Okabe Rintaro. I swing down my index finger. And at that exact same time, I hear the lab door open. My eyes start towards the sound. <laughs> there, in the doorway, stands Karisu. Her face is flushed. Was she running? Why is she here? She should be on her way to the airport right now. Karisu is looking at me. Her eyes are glistening, but her face is, is all smiles. Did she come back for me? In a split second of frozen time, I imagine I hear her voice. We didn't say goodbye, she says. Immediately afterward, my finger strikes the inner key. The world starts to warp. The timeline is being rewritten. I feel my consciousness being sucked into the vortex. Reading Steiner. Divergence is changing. The warp accelerates. Karisu. Daru. Mayuri. Everything inside the lab is shifting. Color fades as my consciousness leaves this world line. I turn to face Karisu, desperate to burn this last sight of her into my eyes. She raises her hand. Sayonara.
the world gradually stops spinning. Little by little, Keller returns. I look to the door. She was standing there just a moment ago. My assistant, Christina, Makise Karisu. Now she is gone, vanished like a dream. I look around the room. Next to me is Daru. Behind me is Mayuri. Everything is where it should be. It looks like nothing has changed at all. I gently touch my coat's shoulder, where Karisu fixed a torn seam. It's gone. My coat isn't torn. The stitches uneven from having been sewn in the dark have disappeared. There's no trace of that ridiculous pink thread. I stand up and head to the development room. Underneath the table, the time leap machine. No, that's not the time leap machine. That's the phone wave name subject to change. The upgrades Karisu made are gone. Nothing has changed. This world is exactly the same. In all respects, save one. Karisu was never here. Every trace of her has vanished. Karisu is nowhere now. Nowhere except in my memories. Mayuri and Daru are looking at me. No. Raboman number 004 wa dare dakke? I need to ask. Even though I know what the answer will be. Okarin, Raboman ni wa 004 no hito wa inai yo? それとも名前すら明かされてない隠れメンバーが幼女なら許す。いや。I knew that it would be like this, but the fact that they forgot her existence is so saddening, so frightening. I am the only person in the world who remembers Makase Karisu as Lab Member 004, so I won't forget. I alone will live with her memory engraved upon my heart. Now, time to proclaim my triumph. There are still things that must be done, and many sacrifices were made to get here. But despite all that, this is my victory. I have won. <laughs> my Yuri and Daru stare in wonder at my abrupt laughter. Ima koko ni. ラグナロックの勝敗は決したこの俺狂気のマッドサイエンティストである法院京馬はそのアインシュタインにも匹敵する IQ170 のレイリナル頭脳により機関およびセルンのあらゆる攻撃に対し時空を操ることで完全に勝利したのだまさに俺は神に等しき存在となったそしてたどり着いたこの大いなる地平我が野望が叶う世界世界の支配構造はリセットされ混沌の未来が待つであろうこれこそがシュタインズオカリーマイリー suddenly throws her arms around me I freeze, utterly taken aback. Daru looks as confused as I am. Mayuri looks up at me and smiles. It's the gentlest smile I've ever seen. <laughs> ねえ無理しないで前にも言ったよねマユシーはオカリンの重荷にはなりたくないってもうその口調続けなくてもいいんだよ辛いなら普通に戻ってオカリンの心をねさらけ出してもいいんだよ俺はもうマユ
シーのことは気にしなくていいからマユシーは大丈夫だからオカリンはねオカリンのために泣いてもいいんだからね何があったのかはわからないけど泣いてもいいんだよ<笑><笑> and just like that, the mask shatters. All it took was one word from Mayuri. Mayuri, the sister I never had, the girl who always needed my protection. I had to save her, that was my purpose. I even sacrificed the girl I loved. But now I finally realize that it's over. Mayuri is safe. I'm free. Once more, I see Karisu's face in my mind's eye. I recall the warmth of her body, the softness of her lips, the weight of her last words. One by one, they pound against my heart. I can't bear it anymore. Jo, Okari, Maji de Naiten no? My vision blurs. Tears run down my cheeks. <laughs> A tidal wave of emotion crashes over me. Nothing remains to hold it back. I'll never see Karisu again. That knowledge shreds my heart. I can't hold back my sobs. I can't stop my tears. This is the world I've been searching for. A world where my eerie does not die. And yet, it is missing the person most precious to me. It's too much. It's too cruel. Why did it have to be Karisu? Why was I forced to choose? Why did she send me off with a smile? I cling to my Yuri. She strokes my hair gently. I surrender to my grief. Three days have passed since then. My Yuri is still alive. Moika and the Rounders have not attacked, and Tenoji has shown no sign of moving against us. Daru has been visiting May Queen as usual, while my Yuri has been working on costume designs for next Komima. Everything is back to normal. Everything, save for the hole in my heart. <sighs> I'm standing by the dumpster out back of the lab. We just finished dumping the last of the trash. This morning, I called Daru and together we dismantled the phone wave and the IBN 5100. Oh, mottai ne na. IBN 5100はウレバプレミア作るのにそれよりねラボから電子レンジがなくなっちゃったよマユシーはもう中心から揚げナンバーワンを食べられないのです電子レンジぐらい拾ってくればいいだろう。We no longer need the phone wave, that miraculous time machine built by coincidence. It brought Kurisu into my life, but at the same time, it made many people suffer. It must never be used again, not by me, not by anyone. It's time for the phone wave to die, and with it, the insane mad scientist Hoenn Kiyoma, lord of space and time. I recall what Kurisu once said. <laughs> I gaze once more upon the scrap heap that was future gadget number eight. We stripped it down to the last bolt and circuit board. Surely no one can rebuild it now. Time travel is too much power for any human to wield. We don't need D mails or time leaps. Even if nothing in the future is guaranteed. Even though I may die tomorrow. Life was never meant to be redone, and that's fine by me. 
Wouldn't you say so too, Karisu? I look up at the sky, and even though it's the middle of the day, I can see a single star shining. Maybe it's Venus, which suddenly reminds me. Every night, we casually travel through time. That's what Karisu said. And each and every word she spoke, I carve into my heart. So that I'll never let them slip from my memory. For as long as my life endures. And that's Karisu's ending. The ending of chapter 10. Now, as I said, there is two versions of chapter 10. And the other one involves Mayuri. And what distinguishes them is how many flags you raise for the true ending. Uh, there are six in total. If you raise anywhere between one and five, you get Karisu's ending. And if you raise none of them, you get Mayuri's ending. Now, luckily, I've been working on a save file all the while in which uh, there have been no true ending flags raised. So next video, we can just see the differences between Karisu's chapter and Mayuri's chapter. And that's going to be interesting. Most of the scenes are the same, but there are some that are different. Like a lot of the events replay themselves. I think ultimately uh, you still get like the scenes where Okabe is alone with both uh, Karisu and Mayuri. Like he had the scene with Karisu after it rained inside of Rade Khan. He had the scene with Mayuri uh, at her grandmother's grave. So I think you get both of those, but ultimately they're like slightly different conversations so what i'm going to end up doing and hopefully it works out okay for recording is uh, i'm gonna load up that chapter next time and i'm going to hit like uh skip so like just like every visual novel it has the ability to just zoom through all the non-unique text that i've already read on uh the first chapter 10 and then it'll just automatically stop when there's new stuff so that way I'll be able to like edit in the new unique stuff before it gets to the ending. And then like once the uh, once the world line changes, then you get Mayuri's ending, which is different than what we just saw. So hopefully it'll work out. It probably isn't going to be too long of a video. I can only see it being like maybe under 20 minutes. I don't know. Let's see if we get anything. Okay, Paradox Meltdown completed. That goes into the trophy list as one more new ending. Why, yes, I would like to save my system data. That is important. We'll take a look at the trophies because there's only a few left now. And this is where even if you were like completely cold and blind on Steins Gate, you'd be able to piece together that there's like how many endings there are and how close you are to really completing it. So in our trophies going all the way back to the top, here are all the, well, there's the platinum, here are all the chapters. Oh, interesting that, uh, yeah, I guess the chapter 10 trophy doesn't unlock unless you get the true ending. So Paradox Meltdown, that's Karisu's ending. The one below it is Mayuri's. The gold trophy for completing all endings. Seeing all CGs, we haven't done that yet, obviously. And then I got all the extra ones already. So we are all set to complete the game 100%. No problem. So next time, Mayuri's ending, and then the time after that, we will have to load back up chapter 10 again and raise the final true flag ending so that uh, we see the true ending, the what the actual canonical finish to Steins Gate really is. See you guys then.